If you've watched a Fortnite YouTube video before, chances are you've seen this guy's face. From a broke college student who couldn't even afford a PC, to one of the most hated YouTubers in all of Fortnite, to a multi-millionaire who is loved by everyone, this is the entire story of the man who ruined Fortnite, it's Jerrion. Jerrion was born in Long Island, New York on August 14th, 1997. Growing up, he enjoyed playing basketball and soccer, and he was actually a really good soccer player with offers from multiple colleges. But like a lot of people watching this video, he loved to play video games in his free time like Call of Duty and FIFA. Unlike most kids nowadays, Jerrion did not have a PC when he was younger, so he played everything on console. The one thing he's always loved to do was make videos and upload them on the internet. But since he was young and didn't have the equipment to make high quality videos, he had to find creative ways to get views on YouTube. I had a FIFA channel, I had a Call of Duty like community channel where I would take other people's montages and it was like, you know, a community so I had like a bigger platform but none of it was my original content. That, <laughs> that was like my little business mind back then. Without I having any major success early on, he attended Boston College to pursue a degree in economics because he wanted to have a secure plan for his future. What he didn't know is that everything was about to change very soon. In September of 2017, during his junior year of college, Fortnite Battle Royale was released and he instantly fell in love with the game. For the first year of it being out, he only played on console and did not make any videos, but in his last year of college, he made an investment that would change his life forever. I actually didn't get my first PC until I was 20... I think 21 technically, but I was turning 22. Or, yeah, because it was my senior year of college when I actually had enough money to buy one. But that was the first time... I got a PC, so whenever I see these little 13-year-old kids in my Twitter DM saying, Jerrion, please buy me a PC, I didn't get one until I was 21, so. By the way, Jerrion has never done an interview like this before, so all of this information can only be found in this video. Once he bought his PC, he decided to take another shot at making YouTube videos. This time, he put a lot of effort into making high-quality original content. Sadly, nobody believed that he could actually succeed at what he was doing, including his own brother. One story that I always remember is my brother came down the stairs to me working on it and he said, why are you making a video that no one is going to watch? Like, why are you spending so much time on a video literally no one's going to see? Little did he know this video would pull hundreds of thousands of views and be the start of something huge. The thing is, Jerrion had a pretty interesting strategy to help this video blow up. Mongrel was blowing up in Fortnite, and of course Mongrel used stretch res, he was like the best EU player by far, he was also like 13 years old or something, he was so young. And because he was so young and on Twitch, he had no moderators at all. His chat was a free-for-all. People were, people were putting in cops, people were putting in just the most random links ever. What my smart little brain thought was, what if I just self promote you know, my video in his chat, but I couldn't just go in there and be like, guys, watch this video. So what I did, I went in and I would press exclamation mark res, which is a command to bring up his resolution, but because Mongrel had no mods, there was no command. So instead, I would reply to myself, pretending to be Nightbot, and I would say, Mongrel's resolution is, you know, 1600 by 1080. If you want to learn more about his resolution, watch this video. And I left the link, and I would do that literally the entire day of my internship. I have to thank Mongrel for not having any mods and for making my career. Thank you, Mongrel. After having his first viral video, he kept on going, but this is when he slowly transitioned into tips and tricks content. With the massive player base of Fortnite constantly growing, there were countless amounts of people trying to get better at the game. This meant it was the perfect time for Jerry to make these kinds of videos, and they would all pull hundreds of thousands of views. One of the biggest advantages he had was a real reason to want to succeed on YouTube. Going into my senior year of college, when I bought the PC, I was working an internship, uh, which is, you know, just a summer job, basically, but it's like a corporate job. I worked in New York City, and I was commuting over an hour because I live in Long Island, so I had to commute on the train. It was, it was fucking miserable. So that, like, right there, I was like, I, I don't want to do this. I got to make YouTube work somehow. This motivation made him grind every hour of the day to produce the best videos possible, and he was uploading three to four times a week while still going to school full time. Everything was starting to come together as he was gaining hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of views a video. Obviously, when you're pulling views like this, you make some pretty good money. By the end of my senior year, after starting the It's Jerrion channel, I had over 100, maybe even over 200,000 subscribers. And I was making like double what I would have at an actual job, so...
While he did end up graduating college in 2019, he will never have to use his degree for a real job. Life was looking fantastic, but the thing is, are you really a big YouTuber without having a little bit of controversy? Well, because of Jerrion's tips and tricks videos, anybody could access information that only pro players knew about, so the overall skill level of the game started to increase. Fortnite went from a chill game you could play with your friends to an extremely sweaty game that you had to try hard in to compete. This led to a lot of people saying he ruined Fortnite, so I asked him what he thought about this. I do think I sped up the process of people getting better. Uh, like, if you look at really any other games, I feel like, at least in Call of Duty, there was a guy named X-Jaws who, he had some goaded tips and tricks, and he was always someone I looked up to while playing Call of Duty. So when Fortnite came around, what I sort of did the route of was like, I taught people the basics of the game, and then I sort of expanded and showed them, you know, new tips peace control, stuff like that. There was never like a central place to find all of that information. So I tried to be like that central source. And I do think because of that, I probably sped up the process of people getting better. You know, I'll take the blame for making all these damn 13 year olds cracked out of their damn minds because now I can't even, I can't even keep up. Luckily, he didn't care what people had to say. He was motivated by the fear of working a 9-to-5 desk job his whole life, and he had no plans of slowing down. He reached 300,000 subs in November of 2019, 400,000 one month later, then 500,000 subs in January of 2020, only 18 months after uploading his first video. Aside from the fact that he was producing great content that everybody wanted to see, there was another thing contributing to his rapid growth. That was the beef he had with pro player Zexro. The beef randomly started after Zexro tweeted this saying he actually hates Jerrion. Once this happened, they would constantly go back and forth on social media, arguing and taking shots at each other. In the public's eyes, it seemed like they genuinely disliked each other, but behind the scenes, it was a different story. I never, like, actually disliked him, and I don't think he ever disliked me, because at the end of it, like, when he was about to quit, we made a video where we played uh, Arena, and we were always cool, we always followed each other on Twitter, like, we were never, you know, blocking each other, or just... There was no disdain. People love beef, so if you get beef, it's huge. And in Fortnite, there was never like a content creator beefing with a pro player. Most of the beef would be on Twitter if Zexro like tweeted something. I'd go in and I'd say ratio, and then all of my followers would like it, and we'd try to get more likes than his tweet. I would have his notifications on, so anytime I would see a tweet, he'd say like, you know, we got third place in this tournament, I would say, only third, ratio. If I would see someone really bad, instead of saying they're a bot, I'd say, oh, he's a Zexro. One example, my dog took a poop. I picked it up and I'd say, hey guys, look, she took a Zexro. None of it was ever planned. I never like told Zexro we should beef. All of that was authentic. I just didn't actually hate him. On October 19th of 2020, Jerrion would reach 1 million subscribers in only two years after uploading his first video. The beef with Zexro had such a massive effect on his channel's growth that his 1 million subscriber special started with a two minute montage making fun of him. Jerrion is the GOAT. Oh, let's go! After a couple years of fully focusing on content creation, he wanted to switch things up and started playing the game a lot more. This made him start to take competitive a bit more seriously, and he ended up getting his first and only earnings during the Frosty Frenzy in Chapter 2 Season 5. This placement made him want to keep grinding comps, so he formed a trio with two decent players at the time, Speedy and Taken. In their time playing together, they had a few decent placements, which made for some really good content. Of course, with Jerrion's massive platform, Taken absolutely blew up, but this story does not have a happy ending. One day, Taken logged on and he was banned from Fortnite. He told everybody that it was a false ban, and obviously Jerrion believed him because he had no reason to cheat. Because of this, he contacted Epic Games in order to help resolve the issue, but it turned out Taken was actually cheating. At this point, Jerrion felt like he got taken advantage of, so he was rightfully upset. It also didn't help that Taken went live after the situation unfolded and said this. Members from saying that I got banned. Do you guys know I played with Jerrion and I only had 20k subs before I got banned. I got banned, I got 60k subs and made so much money off Twitch and YouTube. Way more than I made with playing with Jaren, not getting banned. 
So I'm it's called a marketing strat and I'm smart. That's how it is. If I play to James, same old thing. Fucking boy. Since this happened three years ago, I was curious if he still had any bad blood towards Taken. Taken, you know, he did me dirty. He sort of never really apologized until months or maybe even like a year later. At which point I do accept his apology. I'm still I'm not like angry at him, more so disappointed, like in a father way, but it's one of those things where you forgive, but you don't forget. We learned a tough lesson that really you can't trust anyone. It doesn't matter if it's Fortnite, if it's real life, if it's anything, you can't trust nobody. Although one of his good friends completely betrayed his trust, Jerrion continued using his platform to help out other people. To this day, one thing he does is make videos with lesser known players to give them the opportunity to showcase their skills. He actually made videos with tons of pro players who were unknown at the time, including Peterbot and me. Well, I'm not a pro, but I did get 1 million arena points, and if it wasn't for Jerrion making videos showcasing that, I would not have gained the following that I did from it. Do you think you made Bronos' career? <laughs> I think Bronos made his own career but like in everything you know sort of like people getting better at the game i think i pushed him a little bit gave him that little push over the last two years his content has changed a little bit but even with the tips and tricks videos losing popularity his channel still performs as good as ever i think this just comes down to the fact that he's a very positive and likable guy so now that he's accomplished just about everything he's wanted to what's next for jerrion i don't see myself not making fortnite content in the future i really still do like it one of my goals is to expand into fifa which i did a little bit at the beginning of the year I got like 10 million views plus on TikTok, which I think is pretty good. If I don't make videos anymore, this might sound ominous. I'll either be dead or Forever Zone Wars will be bigger than the pit and I'll just be on an island in the Bahamas. But most, I most likely will be making videos for the foreseeable future, as well as being more consistent because I have not been consistent recently, so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this slightly different style of video, and if you did, let me know if there's anybody you'd like me to interview in the comments because I can get that done. Huge thank you to Jerrion for taking the time out of his day to do this interview, and uh, please subscribe so I can get a YouTube plaque, and go check out my other videos if you enjoy content like this.